Big Brian Barnes. 23 professional wins worldwide, including nine on the European Tour, six Ryder Cup appearances, back-to-back -back senior Open championships, and his iconic pipe. The pipe, I don't know how it happened. I think I, I, think I just got to the stage where I, I felt I was smoking too many cigarettes. My father said, he said, well, of course, if you smoke neat tobacco, it's far, far better than having all that paper and and, of course, it looked cool, yeah, you know, it looked different, like me and me shorts, you know. A real crowd pleaser, Brian was also something of a child golfing prodigy. I won the British Youths at Panel in 64, and that particular year I won 21 different championships throughout the West Country. But that was the most important one, and uh, after the event, Gerald Micklem, who was in those days the El Supremo of amateur golf, came up to me and, said, uh, and my father, and he said, uh, Brian, like a word. Um, so we went into a corner, he said, I hear you're turning pro. And I had, at that particular time, no intention of doing so. Unbeknown to me, my father had been in touch with Ernest Button of the Button Boys and got me an interview. Now, I didn't know about anything about this at that particular time, so as far as I was concerned, I was being dead honest with G Gerald that I had no intention of turning pro. And he said to me there and then, he said, look, he said, I will guarantee, but he said, I will guarantee you a Walker Cup place next year if you stay amateur for another year. Following month of turn pro. A glittering career followed as Brian became one of the leading players in the first decade of the European Tour in the 1970s. The Scot was mentored by his father-in-law, Max Faulkner, an Open champion, and arguably had his finest moment at the 1975 Ryder Cup, where he beat Jack Nicklaus not once, but twice in a day. Barnes' precision on the eighth green puts him three up. He adds another on ten and is ready for the kill by the 14th hole. Nicholas needs this delicate putt to stay alive. It slides by, and Brian Barnes has upset Jack Nicholas, four and two. Nicholas and Barnes are paired again in the afternoon singles. You walk onto the first tee and there's Jack beaming with his bloody ice blue eyes, and he shakes me by the hand, he says, well done, Barney, this morning, but there ain't no way you're gonna beat me this afternoon. Although Arnold Palmer's American team went on to win that Ryder Cup decisively, 21-11, Barnes did famously beat Jack Nicklaus two and one in the afternoon session to land his famous double victory. To the American team, who did a very outstanding job, even if Jack did lose two matches today to Brian Barnes, he doesn't mind, really. Yes, I do. He said, yes, he does. But as well as competing for golfing honours, Brian was battling his demons away from the limelight. People always thought that I was a, um, a gregarious individual, loved people, um, full of confidence, which was the complete opposite. Uh, I was shy, still am. Um, and due to that fact, I felt that a couple of sherbets every now and again would just loosen me up, relax me. But it started to get more and more and more. Um, and consequently, it got to the stage where um, in 93, God, 93, uh, there were a couple of times where I uh, went up on the South Downs and thought about committing suicide. Um, and one evening, uh, my wife and I were invited to meet uh, Peter Roosterhouse and his, his new wife. Um, and I got into the car and my wife said something and I saw it. And I drove like a bat out of hell around a couple of blind corners. If something had been coming, we were dead. And even more important, they were dead. And we got into the car park and um, my wife just got out of the car, didn't say another word, and just walked, walked home. We were only 800 yards. And I went in, saw Pete. Um, he gave me a pint of beer. I had one sip out of it. I said, Pete, and I told him what had happened. Uh, went back, phoned my doctor, 
uh, the doctor got in touch with the Priory and I went up there and I was there for six weeks. Brian made his return to competitive golf in France. A tournament down at Cannes um, after I came out of the Priory. It was about two weeks afterwards and I went down there. I was nervous as a kitten and um, walked onto the first tee, stood up on the tee and rifled it, sober. And all of a sudden, the cheer, the <laughs> sorry guys, um, that uh, came up from my fellow pros was incredible. I remember that to my dying day. In 1995, Barnes qualified to play on the European Senior Tour and didn't have to wait long before picking up his first win. 95, uh, the uh, British Senior Open at Portrush. And as luck would have it, um, I tied with Bob Murphy um, after 72 holes and we had a playoff. And the third hole of the playoff, I knocked this tram liner in across the 17th green for an eagle and won but um, the, the thing great great thing about it was that the following year I went back um, to Port Rush again to defend and won it again so I was the first person actually to win the senior open back to back with the help of influential friends including Jack Nicholas and Gary Player Barnes joined the Champions Tour where he won the Canada senior open in 1998 Early 99, I started getting aches and pains. I went and had a blood test, and they found out that I was, uh, I'd contracted rheumatoid arthritis. And it uh, slowly but surely got worse to such an extent that I was literally, I was having injections in my knuckles um, to play. My glove would have to be cut off my hand um, after a round of golf. In those days, I was smoking, and we were in Hawaii, and I got to the seventh hole, I put the cigarette down and putted out and said to the, my playing partners, I said, guys, I can't go wrong, can't go on. Um, it's, it's just too painful. Picked up the fag, had a drag, put it down, and that's the last drag I have ever had of a cigarette. So I'd always promised myself that once I packed up tournament golf, I was gonna pack up smoking. Brian hasn't played tournament golf since his senior career prematurely ended, but he hasn't smoked a cigarette either.